gorgeous out here. Right now it's about mid 60s and because it's so warm, everything is rapidly melting. As you can see, I only have a few mounds of snow left and they're just along the edges of the woods. And because the snow is melting so fast, it means that I have a stream now leading off into the woods. And there's still some standing water in front of the bunkhouse. But other than that, things are drying up here rapidly. However, it's not that way around the rest of the basin and the valley. So earlier this week, I was in Copper Center and I'd gone to the post office. And as I was leaving the post office, I was met with water that was coming up and over the road and into some of the properties that sat along the side of the road. And then I went into Glen Allen where I was stuck in traffic waiting for a pilot car to take me through because the water there is flooding almost the entire stretch of the highway through the main part of the town. coming up into the library and surrounding businesses. The school is closed because it also meant that the septic system, which sits down the hill from the school, is flooded and therefore none of the facilities are working within the building itself. So there's a good chance that they're gonna close that highway this week if they can't remedy the situation. They're bringing in truckloads of rock and gravel but unfortunately the waters are washing away their efforts just as quickly as they're laying everything down. And that's unfortunate. But here on the property, as I mentioned, things are drying up rather quickly. And because things are warming up, it also means that the wildlife is coming out and about. The bears are out of hibernation and I'm beginning to see evidence of the bears here on the property. But in addition to the bears being on the property, I'm also seeing something else. Last year, or the year that I actually moved into the cabin, I had some prints on the property that between myself and the viewers, we determined was a bear because it was the front paw print followed by the back paw print. But right now, here in front of me in the driveway, I've got a couple of prints on the ground that just don't really make any sense. And so I'm hoping that maybe you can help me figure out what these are. So I noticed that there's one, now I'm gonna have trouble finding it, ah, right here. There's one of the paw prints right here, and I can see that it's a full print. And then there's one right behind the camera. These are a bear, not bear, B-E-A-R, but B-A-R-E, barefoot print of, well, it looks like a three-toed animal, to be quite honest with you. It looks like it has two big toes and one little toe in the middle. And it's not my boot print because my boot print, while it's about the same size, it's a little bit shorter and it has these ridges in it. So therefore I know it's not my footprint that has just picked up some of this mud and carried it away. So with that being said, it's time to set up the trail cams. Last year, these trail cameras helped me to identify moose and bears walking through the property. And in fact, the bear seen down at the other trailhead was there just two hours after my son and his roommate were in that exact same location. And that's where I saw the bear prints earlier this week. 
And so getting these trail cameras set up will help me to identify the wildlife that's coming through the property. Speaking of wildlife, in one of my more recent videos, there was a sound of some wildlife that was picked up by the camera. And Steve at Steve's Woodworking and Homestead happened to identify what that sound is. Now I had heard this sound all last spring and summer and fall. And to be honest with you, I could not tell what that noise was. To me, it sounded mechanical, like an engine, a combustion engine uh, trying to turn over. I talked to my contractor and his crew and they agreed that that's what it sounded like. And when I talked to some of my neighbors, they didn't know what it was either. But Steve knew what the sound was. So it turns out that it's a male spruce grouse and that's his mating call. What he does is flaps his wings in a rapid succession while standing on a log and that draws in all the ladies, if you will. <laughs> I am very happy to have identified the sound because to be honest with you, thinking that it was an engine off in the woods someplace was really disturbing to me actually. And so very thankful to Steve for identifying the sound. But I'm gonna get these cameras set up and see what happens to be walking around on the property. And I'll be checking the security cameras to find out what made those prints in the driveway. And one of the other things is, is there is so much daylight out now that I can see on those security cameras basically 24 hours a day now. At night, I do have night vision on those cameras, so I do get a pretty good view of what's happening on the property during the night hours. But right now, there's 18 hours of daylight, and by the time the summer solstice comes around in about a month's time, I'll be at just, well, I guess I'll be at 19 hours. So I'll gain another hour of daylight between now and then. The sun is setting around 1030 at night and it doesn't come up till 430 in the morning. So at night it's really bright outside and I can see clear down into the trees with the sun coming up at 430 in the morning. As soon as it crests over the mountaintops, it's basically waking Kenai and I up. So I do have some blackout curtains on order but they're not here yet. So hopefully they show up here any day now. But speaking of what's going on inside the cabin, let's head inside and I'll show you something that I've got brewing up in the kitchen. the last remaining fixtures from the original kitchen are these shelves. And when I first moved in here, they were also covered in fabric, um, but it wasn't one that really suited my style. So I took them down and I just tacked up some hardware store drop cloths, if you will, because it was more neutral, but it's still unsightly. And when you pull the drop cloth back, what you have to do in order to access anything in here, it's even more unsightly. These shelves have become just a catch-all for anything and everything, but most of the stuff that's on these shelves has nothing to do with the kitchen, which is fine, but it's also not a great way to organize anything. So I have a project in mind to remedy this situation, help organize this area, and also 
to prevent things from sliding off these shelves should there be an earthquake. Because as you might know, Alaska is famous for its earthquakes. I've yet to experience one here at the cabin, but I know it's bound to happen at some point. So before I get started on the project, I need to empty these shelves. So let me get that taken care of, and then I'll show you what I have up my sleeve, if you will. Well, I don't really have sleeves on, but you know what I mean. Oh, and backups for backups. You can never have too many backups. Or can you? Maybe. All right, I'll be back. Well, that does it. I've got the shelves all cleaned off now. And so I'm just gonna take out these shelf liners that were in here and remove the fabric. And then we'll be on to the next step. You ever do that? If you're working on a project and you just throw it off behind you? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. All right, so before I can do anything, I need to get rid of this fabric. And I don't want to just throw this fabric out because I'm going to be using it elsewhere. I might have no choice but to destroy this fabric in some areas, but that's okay. Learn from my mistakes. Don't staple fabric to anything unless you plan on leaving it there. Because what a pain is this to try to remove all of these staples. But like I said, being frugal about this, I plan on reusing this fabric after laundering it, of course. And what a tedious job it is to try to remove all of these staples and like I said you can't when it's stapled like this you cannot launder anything so I knew all along that these shelves would be going and that this would be temporary um, knowing that it was temporary I should have planned a different way of hanging this fabric up here so the original owners had just some wire that was attached via some nails. As you can see here, there's a nail there and there's a nail here. And they just had the fabric, um, had a channel sewn in it and then had uh, the fabric draped through that wire, had the wire draped through the fabric and had it hung that way. So at least they could take it down and launder it, which was smarter than this. They did the same thing to hang this curtain up here. This is literally just a piece of wire up here holding this curtain on. Eventually, that's gonna get um, replaced as well. Eventually, not, not anytime soon, I don't think. Well, one eternity later, and I finally got all those staples out. So yeah, learn from my lesson and don't uh, staple <laughs> fabric onto wood. But to be honest with you, I kind of like the shelves now that the fabric's gone. Maybe if I just put some decorative items on it, it'll work. Oh wait, now that I look closer at these shelves, there's no way that I'm leaving these shelves here. If I were to do that, I would honestly have to sand them down and refinish them. But these shelves are going to be repurposed. So believe it or not, these shelves are coming out. So let me grab my tools and we'll get started. thinking alone why didn't you take the mirror off the wall uh, before starting this well I was very cognizant of my um, pry bar and hammer placement and the mirror because this mirror is incredibly heavy 
and was a pain to get hung up on the wall because it's actually just hung by a hook behind here and a hook behind here. It doesn't actually have a cord running across. And so, because it was so tedious to get up there and it is so heavy, I didn't want to have to take it down. And luckily I didn't break the mirror. So back to work I go. invest in an oscillating tool, an oscillating cutting tool, so I could just shear these uh, nails off when I go to do this other set. It's one way of doing it. Oh, I need to get a sledgehammer. Why didn't I do that to begin with? So much easier. And that's a long nail. All right. <laughs> two shelves down and two to go. I managed to get the shelves off without too much effort. I mean, it did do a little bit of damage to the walls. It pulled out a little bit of the wood and left some nail holes. And I have one nail that was left in the wall. But honestly, other than a little bit of muscle effort, it they came down fairly easily. I did think at one point I was going to have to go buy an oscillating cutting tool so I could just shear off the nails. But I'm glad that I didn't have to do that. However, getting the shelves off the wall did expose some issues with this wall. One is you can see all this water damage that was behind the shelves. And I knew that this water damage was here because you can see it actually starts up here behind the mirror. But that's a non-issue because it's actually been remedied by the replacing of the roof. So when I bought the cabin, it had a foam roof that was leaking and the eaves were not far enough out to keep water off the exterior of the logs. And like I said, there was a leak which was allowing water to come down inside the cabin. The roof has been replaced, so that's been remedied. So this is basically just staining and that could be sanded down and the logs will look new again. Not concerned about that part of it. What I am concerned about though is this canter in the logs here. This log and this log are tilted inward and then that has created this triangular piece here in the window framing. And in my opinion, that needs to be remedied. Um, this log is resting upon the corner of this log, but it should be resting face to face, not have this one inch gap in here. So I think that's gonna need to be remedied. I need to get this one nail out of the wall or pound it in, but it's bent, so it's not gonna go in. I tried that already. Um, and I need to clean up this wall because there is a ton of debris that was stuck behind the shelves. So let me get this cleaned up. And then I'll show you what my new solution is for storage along this area that hopefully will be more secure than the shelves were as far as earthquakes are concerned. <laughs> build a cabinet. No, no. See, all those measurements are for an upcoming project. And to be honest with you, at the cost of lumber here in Alaska right now, I can't afford to actually build anything. Well, I do have things I have to build, but really I could buy a piece of furniture cheaper than I can build something these days. Well, used furniture that is. If you look at the prices of new furniture in Alaska, it'll break your heart and your bank. So this 
came from the antique store that I had visited a few months back. I had eyed this and I knew that I needed some storage solutions here in the kitchen and so this is what I chose and um, luckily by the time I went in to buy it it had been marked down significantly so as you can see it's not in the best of condition it actually is uh, got some missing veneer here um, a lot of the pieces of what is missing are here in the drawer and so I'll be gluing those back on but this is a secretary believe it or not from the 1800s and it has three deep drawers which is perfect because I actually needed a place to store my roasters so these have been without a home since I've moved in. And luckily I was able to, um, you know, buy this and have a place to store these. But as you can see, like I said, it does need a little bit of work. The drawers are a little bit tight and so I'll need to, um, you know, wax those so they'll be able to move freely. But as I said, this is a secretary And so it has a drop down desk and some internal storage. This portion here is going to be used for its intended purpose. It'll be used to sort mail, bills, things like that. Um, you know, if I need to write out a quick note or something, I'll be doing that here as opposed to having to run upstairs and tend to things like that up there. So that's what this is. I do have the skeleton key for this uh, desk as well. So I can lock this up. However, I did try to lock one of these drawers um, while they were out. And unfortunately the lock itself didn't recede all the way upon unlocking it. And so I don't think that I will be um, actually locking this anytime soon, just for the fact that I don't wanna risk the drawers staying locked when I'm intending to be in them. Yeah, this was a lot less expensive than if I tried to make something, especially knowing that I wouldn't be able to make anything quite this nice. And also buying new furniture, like I said, in the state of Alaska right now is out of the question. So not only did I buy this though, but I bought something else. Come with me and I'll show you. So the other pieces of furniture that I purchased was this bureau. Now this is according to the antique dealer, this is what's called base furniture. And the reason he's calling it base furniture is because this is what the officers' homes were furnished with in the military bases here in Alaska um, in the 50s and early 60s. So this piece though matches pretty darn well to my china cabinet and my buffet. So that's why this is sitting here. Also, it's sitting here because I needed a place for my linens, uh, table linens and other um, kitchen wares and things like that. Believe it or not, I have a lot of kitchen wares. If you couldn't tell by my cooking videos, I love to cook and I need a place to store all the things that I just didn't really have a home for. So that's why I bought these two pieces of furniture. And as I said, these were both on sale and I had been saving up for this project anyhow, because like I said, I knew those shelves would be coming out. So I did get one more thing though, while I was in town and you may have seen it in one of my most recent videos. So this is the other thing that I managed to pick up while I was in town. And you probably saw this in a recent video, but the reason for the new chandelier 
is not only does it closely resemble the chandelier that I got um, from my grandparents after they had passed, but also I needed it because this light fixture actually isn't working. So only a couple of the sockets are working and then the globes are broken and missing and I tried to buy new globes for it. I couldn't find anything that fit it and I decided after months of trying to just give up on it and find something that actually is going to work better in this space. So hence why the new chandelier. And like I said, this sitting in someone's garage for the last couple of decades, uh, they let this go for a still. And I'm very fortunate that they did because they obviously did not know what these are going for online because there's no way I could have bought one at those prices. So when my son comes out, I'm going to have him hardwire this for me and get that put up and take the other one down. So for now, it's just hanging there temporarily just to keep it up and off the floor. As I mentioned, I'd gone to the post office and usually that means that there are some gifts and goodies that have been sent to me by viewers. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who sent gifts in. So I want to say thank you to Marnie for this Black & Decker ceramic heater that is sure to keep my toes toasty warm as i'm sitting there editing on long winter nights i really appreciate it as well as the emergency radio that is going to be a lifesaver if ever i should need it along with this anarchist cookbook and if you're not familiar with this cookbook i will just tell you that this isn't your traditional cookbook uh, and there's not much in here that i can show on youtube without getting in some sort of trouble so thank you, Marnie, for these items. I really appreciate all of them. And I want to say thank you to whoever sent me in these velvet curtains. Um, that was completely unexpected. They had just gone in the wish list inadvertently, believe it or not. I meant to put them in save later. But nonetheless, I really appreciate them because they're something that I really wanted. So I appreciate that. And I also appreciate the things that Bren sent. Bren sent me a dish towel and a couple of hot pads, a thoughtful handwritten note, and a recipe for an easy quiche. So thank you, Bren. I really appreciate all of this. And I appreciate each and every one of you for watching today's video. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And please also remember to hit that like button. If you've watched this far, chances are you liked what you saw. Additionally, I have some outtakes for you that you might like as well. And on top of the outtakes, when they're done, guess what? There'll be some links to some additional videos that you might like also. Until next time, please stay safe and take care, and I'll see you on the next video. Too bad I'm not frustrated. <laughs> if I was still working, I could take my frustrations on, about my job out on this situation. Hold your breath for so long. Oh, my God. You see how long that nail is? Do you see that? That's an awfully long nail for that shelf. Overkill. Overkill. Overkill.